Is there a couple of Greg? Would you like to come up and introduce us? Absolutely. Happy to. It's good to see a fellow South Fork High grad in this club. And I think you're at least a third generation of scouts there, are you not? Yeah. Yes. Your grandmother went there. Yeah. Your dad and your yeah. uncles. Yeah. Yeah. They had my parents as teachers. So <laughs> um, I didn't see your name circulated otherwise. Well, but welcome anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> but I'm here not to be a smart ass, um, but, to, uh, but that comes naturally. Um, to introduce our speaker this morning is someone who I know primarily through Zoom. Uh, it's good to see uh, Darlene in person, but uh, Darlene Spore is our uh, program this morning, and she uh, leads the uh, Arcata House Partnership, which I think many of you are familiar with, but it's been in um, Arcata and the environs since 1991, providing uh, services to the homeless and, and others um, and uh, with compassion, dignity, and respect. And Darlene has been there since 2016. Thank you for, by the way, having a website with information on it. Uh, uh, but during her tenure, the organization has doubled in size, and uh, we've been hearing a lot of good things about uh, some of the expansions and the new projects they have on board. And it's it's always been important. It's, it's you know we think the homelessness and some of this is a relatively new phenomenon, but again, 30 years. So a little bit you know the year before this club started is when our Kita House partnership started, and so. Um, I know Darlene through Zoom being really involved in the housing discussions, which I think are really important. Um, and so I want to introduce her and bring her up and hear about all the great stuff you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I do know most of you, but I want to start by just saying thank you. What you guys do for the community is amazing. And one of our shelters looks so happy and sparkly with blue paint and a yellow door because of the service you guys did and painted one of our shelters. So thank you. We need the support of all, everyone in our community. You are the face of the business, the face of tourists, the face of uh, all that is happy in Arcata. And I represent those people that we don't really see. And um, they are still our citizens and still our neighbors and still our family members. And I just really wanna thank all of you, first of all, um, for what you do for, our, for the community, but certainly for the people who are in most need. And I wanna talk a little about that because I think there were two things that are, I think are amazing about my job. One is I get to represent the people who are faceless. And the other is I get to brag about the amazing work our staff is doing. So I wanna do both of those today. I wanna to talk a little about what we do because what has happened in the world of homelessness has just exploded. As you know, we are seeing more and more people who are homeless, more and more people who are hungry, more and more people who are in need of services. Luke, thanks for your new job, we love you. Um, and, and what is happening for us in this world is that it feels like every one person we get housed, three new people are coming to us who are citizens of our community who are homeless, homeless for the first time. Saturday, I get a phone call bright and early in the morning and I'm not a morning person, thank you very much, I, I get it. Um, and it's an 80 year old, a 70 year old woman who um, is in need of service. And I think they may have came through the, I don't know, there was the police department or the emergency room, um, who was homeless for the first time. And she'd been homeless for about uh, 10 days. She had enough money to be in a hotel for a few days. Uh, she lost her housing because her spouse died and her income got cut and she couldn't afford to be there anymore. And she was scared to death. Imagine being homeless for the first time at 70. First of all, it's untenable to me that people who are 70 have to worry about that. And she was scared to death. And, and she came uh, up to our staff and said, are you the people that house people? And we're like, what can we do for you? And as it turns out, we were able to, she had a car with two dogs. We were able to get her into a, our safe parking spot. Um, program the very next day so she didn't spend one day without service and now it's been a few days 70 year old women shouldn't be sleeping in their car very long 
And we did get her into a shelter bed uh, within the next couple of days. But these are the stories of the people who we are serving. When we talk about the, the face of the homeless, I know what I see when I walk through the plaza or through our town. I don't see the families, the mom with their children in the car who have to worry about going to school every day. I'm generally not seeing the 80 year old woman who was a social worker um, or an ER nurse at San Francisco emergency room for all those years. What I'm seeing is the people who have severe mental health issues and substance use issues. And so when we all think about the people in our community who are homeless, that's what comes to mind, right? The person who's peeing in our doorway, the person who is talking to themselves and having a really difficult time, or the person that we're calling APD about all the time, all of us, because they're having difficulty. I wanna tell you that this, the two single um, fastest growing populations that we've been serving over the last three years since COVID Families with little children who have lost their jobs. They've been working in you know, minimum wage jobs. They've lost their jobs. They have nowhere to go. And seniors. And it just makes no sense to me. But we are working, we as Arcata are working faster and harder than any other city in Humboldt County. So I wanna say that we are opening more shelters and more housing at a rate that's just not seen throughout our county. You guys have supported alternate shelter programs over the last couple of years as we try really hard to get a place for people. And so over the last few years, there are some things that we've done, our Kid House Partnership has done that we've never done before. We never ran an emergency tent shelter program before. We never ran an emergency hotel program before. We never ran an emergency car uh, park program before. But we've done that this year um, over the last couple of years with the support of all of you. No other city in Humboldt County is doing that. There's been no other managed hotel program. There's been no other tent shelter program or safe parking program in the county. And we've done that. And we've done it learning some lessons um, because it's been the first time we've done it. We've run shelters for 31 years, but, but not those kind. We've learned lessons and we're much better. And I wish we didn't have to be better because I wish we didn't have to have those kinds of programs. But we do, and I wanna thank you all. So let me just say, when we opened the safe parking program on Samoa, there were lots of people parked out front with broken down RVs and people were calling saying, Darlene, what kind of program are you running here? It looks like a mess. And I kept saying, our program is inside the fence uh, and it doesn't look like a mess, um, but there are people on the streets and people in the community that still really need help. And, and um, I encourage you to call me, but we can't be all things to all people. I get calls all the time. Uh, you're, you're opening this new program. Why are there still people who are homeless in the community? I'm like, give me a minute. <laughs> we're, we're trying, we're on our way. So I wanna take a minute to really brag about the amazing work that our staff do. And we do this because of your support. Um, in this year, between January and the end of September, we have provided 38,502 meals. 38,000 meals to people who are hungry between January and September. And we're not even a food, pro I mean, we're a little food program. We're not, our, our food needs have just expanded. We serve 85 people and families each week at our food pantry, Wednesday afternoons, four to six, looking for volunteers, just saying. Um, we uh, support and distribute uh, food at 20 locations throughout our county. Uh, and that food is collected um, through businesses. Uh, you have extra food. The store has to move their merchandise. We collect about 3,000 pounds of food a week because of the generosity of the restaurants and stores. And we distribute that to 20 locations that then get distributed to hundreds of people. Um, so thank you. Please keep, keep calling, keep sending that. Uh, the point in time count, <clears throat> which you know happens every other year, um, counts people on that day who want to be counted and identified as people who are homeless. 
And um, this year, earlier this year, the point in time count said that we have about 340 people in Arcata who are homeless. Well, I can tell you that between January and September, we've served 630 people who are homeless. Mm -hmm. So the point in time count we've always thought was about 50% of what we were seeing. And that's really true. If we've seen 631 different people uh, during this time, that means there's a lot more people that we haven't served. Our shelter bed nights, the way we count our shelter bed nights is one person, one night. So for every one person that has a place to be for one night, that's one person who's not sleeping in a doorway one time in this community. That's one person who has a place to pee that day or has warm food. And to date, January to September, we have provided over 7,000 bed nights of shelter. That means 7,000 times you guys, all of us, didn't see one person sleeping on the street for one night. And still, we see hundreds of people, dozens of people, too many people, and it feels overwhelming. And so I know for us, for people who work in this, in this industry, that it does feel overwhelming. And so for the community, when you walk down the street and you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many people. We are so inundated and we are so often overwhelmed by the sheer number of people that we're seeing, all of us, that it's hard sometimes to remember compassion because it just feels too much. And for every one person you're seeing, we anticipate that you're probably not seeing four people who are trying not to be seen. Families with little children don't want to be seen because they don't want somebody to call Child Protective Services. We don't think homelessness is a crime. We think if families have little children, we want to help them so that their children have a place to be so the bus knows where to pick them up to go to school, right? So. If you're out there, please know we don't call the police because somebody's homeless. We help them. Our shelters um, are really, I think, what people know most about us. We have um, five shelters uh, and intermittent ones that open uh, as we need to. As you know, we have a one a larger shelter on Boyd Road that many of you have volunteered at and helped paint a few years ago and done all of those wonderful things. And we serve about 20 people a night there. We have a re-entry shelter program where people coming directly out of jail or prison um, can go. We don't want to add to the homeless population. So we have that program. It's, a, it's um, sponsored by the uh, Department of Probation and we really appreciate that. We have a women's only DV facility. Um, we opened this recently because we are getting since COVID inundated with the number of people, not just women, but mostly women, who have been in such um, difficult places because people are contained in their houses. They're not going to work. Uh, frustration is higher, all of those things. And so the number of people who um, are reaching out to us, who are trying to flee domestic violence is really uh, just, exploded. We have the safe parking program over on Samoa, which now looks wonderful. Thank you to the APD for helping us move people along or get people into the program uh, behind the fence who um, should be being served. And uh, we serve an average of 30 people or families vehicles there a night. Um, there's porta potties and uh, food and staff and water and a social place. And many of those people go to work every day. They may be people working in your business. Uh, they go to work every day. They have a place to shower and do their laundry. Um, and they have a place to be with dignity. And we, we are really very grateful for that. Although that's a short-term program. We started that uh, last April and it's, the funding is through March. Let me just say one of the, most difficult things about what we do is that our funding is just comes in little bits and pieces. So every, we have funding for one program for one year and every year we have to try to find ways to continue that funding. 
And we're trying really hard to work with um, a lot of our funding comes from the feds and the state to help them understand that it's really labor intensive to have to write all of these proposals every year for the same project. Give us a couple of years, let us take a breath, right? Um, we had a hotel, emergency hotel program until just a couple of weeks ago when we bought the days in and we are, we are, uh, we are turning it into 60 units of affordable housing. Um, so that's really exciting. We bought it uh, September 15th. Uh, uh, the goal is to have all of the renovations done and kitchens put in so they're fully functioning apartments by the end of the year so that we can get 60 people housed. Um, the population that'll go in there is they have to be homeless and very low income. Uh, so we um, have been working with the community to get people on the list Unfortunately, we have 60 units. Danco bought the red roof in and we'll do the same kind of program. Um, and they have uh, 79 units. We currently have 3000 people on the waiting list. And that's just people who are homeless <coughs> and at or below $16,400 a year in income for a single person. Yikes. So we're trying as hard as we can. Um, we also, as you know, do permanent housing. We'll add these 60 units. Uh, we have 46 units throughout the community of permanent supportive housing where people live in your apartments and they're your neighbors um, and we subsidize the rent. Um, we have another 14 units of support. These are similar to section eight, um, except they come through us because they get support services. So we have staff that work with them all, all the time for permanent supportive housing and rapid rehousing units. We have 14 of those. Um, we need landlords. So not only do we need volunteers, we need you, we need landlords, we need you to employ our people. We need, we need you, all of those things. Um, this year, we also uh, referred people to our partner agencies Open Door, Adult Protective Services, uh, Senior Center, all of those organizations that do things that we don't do. We partner with about 200 organizations because we're really good at what we do, homeless services. We're not a medical provider. We don't do detox. We don't, there are things we don't do. And so we partner and we referred um, people 5,200 times since the beginning of the year so that, that uh, excuse me, people can get additional services that they need. That's, that's who we are. Now over here, I have some information. I have some pretty color things. So if you wanna see what we do, please stop by. Um, I have some flyers. If you know people who are experiencing homelessness, please grab some, share them. Information that talks about our program Again, we can't do what we do without you. And so I wanna thank you all. I want you to understand that we are working as hard as we can. It may be your mother or your sister, it may be your brother or your, or your nephew who is um, receiving services from us. So remember that the face of the homeless isn't just the person with severe mental health issues or substance use issues. It's really the person who's sitting next to your child in school. And so let's be a little compassionate and a little, you know, uh, um, generous to Arcata House Partnership, by the way. Um, <laughs> but we're here, we're here to serve the community. We've been here a long time and it's our honor. Thank you.